Hey guys, and welcome to my Enhancement Shaman Basic PvP Guide. In this guide, I'm going to be talking about our abilities, our rotation, our stat priority, honor talents and talents, and then just my general thoughts on the class and my general input on the class over the years, and uh, my suggestions. So, let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, stat priority. I'll read it off here. I'm reading this directly off of the Icy Veins website, and if you don't know, Icy Veins is pretty much a website that's completely free, written by Mythic Raiders. Um, so I, I'd say that's all the input you really need. Uh, non azurite dependent, which is probably what you're going to want to go for. First priority is haste. Second priority is crit, which is equal to versatility. Third priority is mastery. Fourth priority being agility. Um, personally, I don't 100% believe this. I think anything that's directly an item of upgrade is probably going to be an overall DPS increase. I don't really like to think about secondary stats that much. But again, if you want to, I guess, really look your secondary stats, which... If you want a min-max, I would suggest you actually do. Haste, crit, versatility, mastery, agility, in that order descending. So, now that the stats are out of the way, we can just kind of go over our main abilities. And this is more directed towards like a very beginner guide, I, I suppose. But anyway, we don't have many abilities as Enhancement Shaman, but we have more abilities than a sub-rogue, so we've got that going for us. First of all, your main ability, your main resource generator is Rockbiter. Salts your target with an earthen power, dealing 4,817 nature damage. 4 point second recharge, 20 yard range. So I'd say the main takeaway here to remember is that Rockbiter does have a decent amount of range. Uh, does also a decent amount of damage. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that's it. You'll see it here. Just that. That's all it does. Generates Maelstrom. You'll see I have four full Maelstrom now, now that I've cast four of those. And, of course, when you get Maelstrom, you use that on Storm Strike, which pretty much just does a lot of physical damage. That's Storm Strike. Lava Lash, which pretty much does fire damage and is the ability you're going to be using when you don't have Storm Strike. Flame Tongue is an ability that's completely free, enhances your weapon, causes your melee auto attacks and melee attacks to do additional fire damage. This is pretty much going to be applied whenever, whenever you're either at range, whether it's about to fall off or you just have no other buttons to press. Um, I'd say ability-wise, Storm Strike definitely takes priority over everything else. And then... I'd say maintaining Flame Tongue is my second priority, and then just kind of maintaining maintaining a high Maelstrom power. Um, going into Crash Lightning, which is an interesting ability. Pretty much if you use Crash Lightning in an AoE situation, you'll hit everyone in that AoE situation. You'll gain a buff that buffs your Storm Strike damage by 5% for each target hit, and it'll also grant you a flat nature increase to your uh, Storm Strike. You'll see here Crash Lightning. That is pretty much Storm Strike and Lava Lash deal an additional, f what was it, 3,000 damage to people in front of you. So since I'm only targeting this guy, but the rest of these guys in front of me, even if I do use Lava Lash, it does 13,000 hitting all of those compared to the just like 3,000 it would normally. And of course, you can get this buff by just hitting two or more targets. So if there's two or more targets around you, I would suggest using this. It can generate a decent amount of Maelstrom as well. Overall, I think Crash Lightning is a very unique ability. I think it has the chance to generate a decent amount of Maelstrom if you're pretty lucky. Empowers your Storm Strike, and it also empowers your Storm Strike with that flat nature damage increase. Um, Lightning Bolt, I'm not going to talk about that unless you're running a certain talent, which I'll get to later. Sundering pretty much just does a ton of damage. I consider, I'd consider it a stun, or an interrupt, rather than just a flat damage ability. Because when you do use it, it does pretty much interrupt anyone who you are trying to hit. You'll see there, it pretty much just hits people in a straight line, and it'll always interrupt anyone who's casting, even if it's a protected uh, spell, say Pally uses Divine Focus, or like a priest uses that in uninterruptible thing, where you just can't interrupt with a normal interrupt. You can use Sundering, and it'll interrupt them because it's physically moving their character, and that's not considered an interrupt, it's more of just considered a physical movement. So it'd be like the same thing if the guy just moved while he was trying to cast, it would just interrupt it. Third ability, not third, eighth ability. There's no rotation or no, like, priority on my abilities. I'll get into, the, like, the rotation priority here soon. Feral Spirit's just a cooldown usage, does decent damage, generates Maelstrom, pretty much use it with your cooldowns. Bloodlust, I'll get to that later, because that's more woven into, I guess, the PvP Honor talents. Earthen Spike, also a talent, I'll get into that later. Healing Surge is probably the weakest out of all the hybrid heals in the game right now, currently. Mainly because whenever you have Maelstrom, I'll showcase it here. Whenever you whenever you have Maelstrom, you can pretty much throw instant healing surges on people. It still drains your mana. It also drains your Maelstrom, so that's something to keep in mind. But if you need the heals really bad and you have the mana and you have the Maelstrom to spare, then it's not a bad ability. One thing to keep in mind is that it does heal significantly less than Flash of Light 
Uh, it does heal slightly less than Flash of Light. It heals more than Vivify, but Vivify is spammable. I'm trying to think of the other hybrid heal off the top of my head. It does heal less than Shadow Mend as well. And it heals less than Death Strike. Even though that's not really worth mentioning. It, it's the worst hybrid heal out of all the hybrid heals is what I'm trying to get at. So keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about using it. Other than that, we have Spirit Walk. Removes dots. Not removes dots. Removes movement and pairing effects. So say you're hamstringed, you're slowed by deadly poison, you are rooted, something like that. It'll pretty much cleanse you of all that and increase your movement speed by 60%, which is normal mount speed. You also have Astral Shift. Shift partially into elemental planes, taking 40% less damage for 8 seconds. Uh, the main thing about here is how heavy the damage reduction is and how short the duration of this is. So ideally, you want to time this when you think you're going to be taking the most damage. So whenever a mage can bust, whenever you get smoke bombed, generally those situations when you know you're going to be taking a lot of damage is when you're going to use this. Um, Earthbind, literally just a slow, range slow that has, a, I think it's a 40 yard range now, which is pretty crazy. And along with Earthbind, which should be noted, is usually you Earthbind and then throw a capacitor right on top of it. At least that's what I do. And capacitor has the same range as uh, Earthbind, and it just stuns people in an AoE. I think at 8 yard range. Within 8 yards for 3 seconds, so it's just a stun. We also have Ghost Wolf, literally just a movement speed increase. Tremor Totem makes you immune to fears, charms, and sleep effects. Really useful. Recently got introduced, I think, two patches ago. So it's good to see that back. We also have Earth Elemental, but it's pretty useless unless you have a certain trait for it. Uh, we have Cleanse Spirit, which pretty much removes all curse effects. This is pretty decent against Warlocks if they choose to apply curses to people, such as Curse of Tongues. Um, what else? We have Hex. I don't use Hex admittedly enough in Battlegrounds, but I use it a decent amount in Arena. Pretty much it's like a polymorph, which with a lesser range, but yeah, that's it. It's just like a polymorph with a 30 second cooldown with a lesser range. Uh, one thing to note is that it doesn't regenerate people's mana or health like a polymorph does, but it will, it will take a little bit of damage before breaking, but if you take enough damage it will break just like a polymorph. But it is a little more durable. Like, you can maybe hit someone for, like, 2,000 and it won't break, but anything beyond that, I'd say it's probably going to break fairly fast. One of the abilities that recently got heavily buffed in patch 8.1.5 was Purge. Before, I believe it cost 4,000 mana, which is the same as a Healing Surge. Uh, they reduced that down to 2,000, which is a tenth of our mana. Pretty useful. Uh, this is especially useful against Fire Mages, Pallies, anyone who has, I'd say, removable buffs. Resto Druids, Fire Mages, Holy Pallies. The reason I say this is Fire Mages have Combustion, which is really overpowered. Resto Druids have Rejuvenation and all their heals over time, which are buffs that Jan can be dispelled through Purge. And uh, Holy Pally, Bop, is the one that I just love to Purge so much, and it's probably the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Let's see what else. We also have Reincarnation. I don't think that's really worth mentioning because it's really dependent on you as a player when you want to use it, and it's... Most of the time, you don't really get, like, a full use out of it. Like, you revive, you just die, like, five seconds later, so I don't think it's worth mentioning. What else is worth mentioning? I'd say Wind Shear is worth mentioning because it's a 30-yard range interrupt, which is pretty rare, especially for a melee DPS. Uh, the closest thing that another melee DPS has to this is uh, Death Knight Mind Freeze. So, in this, it's half of the half of the range of mind Wind Shear. So, this is really good against mages and casters as well. Um... Going into, I guess, Stormbringer, which is, uh, I don't want to say what enhancement is relying upon, but if we didn't have this passive, we'd be the most boring fucking spec in the game. Your weapon attacks have a 6.4% chance to reset the remaining cooldown in Storm Strike, so it resets the cooldown of your main ability, and causes your next Storm Strike to deal 25% increased damage, causes your main ability to do 25% increased damage, and costs no Maelstrom. So, free damage increase resets the cooldown. I think that's all I really need to say. Another thing worth mentioning is Wind Fury. Each of your main hand attacks has a 26% chance to trigger two extra attacks, dealing 837 physical damage. This used to be a lot better, but I'll get into this when I get into talents as well. So let's get into talents, now that we're finally there. For the top row, I'd stick with Boulder Fist every time. Reduces the, cat, reduces the cooldown, increases the damage. That's all I really need to know. If you're not going to take Boulder Fist, I'd suggest taking... I don't know. I think both of these are equally shit, so... You can try Hot Hand. I don't think Hot Hand procs enough. I think they probably half the proc chance of what it was in Legion. So that's just that's just my own input from my own testing, by the way. Uh, Lightning Shield. They made it... They did something weird with it, this patch that made me not want to take it anymore. 
It does do damage to melee attackers. I think the damage it does. The 20 charges, the shield overcharge is causing you to deal additional nature damage for you with each attack. It's It can be good. I've used it in the past. I did actually use this like every time before it got nerfed a little bit. This is either last patch or this patch, but it got nerfed a little bit, so I just haven't taken it since. And it was specifically nerfed in PvP, I believe, but Boulder Fist is the go-to choice here for the 30 row. Uh, Forceful Winds is what I take for Battlegrounds, because as I mentioned with Crash Lightning, Crash Lightning can proc your Wind Fury, and your Wind Fury obviously generates Maelstrom, does damage. So if you have Forceful Winds and you go in, get a Crash Lightning, see how many Wind Fury procs we got there. So we got two Wind Fury procs there, which means this would stack up to three times. I'll actually just switch talents here as soon as I get out of combat. So, this is like what I'm talking about, about Force Wounds. This is why you see me taking it a decent amount. And it's mainly because, as an enhancement, you're actually going to be getting a decent amount of uh, Wind Fury procs in AoE situations, and the Wind Fury procs can add up a decent amount. Uh, you'll see here, didn't really get too lucky, but if there's big AoE groups, you can crash lightning and get a decent amount of Storm, not Storm Strike, Wind Fury procs. But it is RNG, so that's something to take into consideration, but you'll see there. I used one Crash Lightning, went from one stack to three stacks, and now I'm at four stacks. And once you get towards the upper stacks, it actually starts doing decent damage. Now you'll see there, two of my hits hit for one hit of Wind Fury at high stacks hits for about 4,000. The only thing that puts this back is obviously the RNG of Wind Fury, which personally I think kind of reduces the value of this Forceful Winds trait below Landslide. Uh, every time take a Landslide for the most part, especially with the Rockbiter talent. With the reduced cooldown of Rockbiter with Boulder Fist and Landslide, it just synergizes really well. Rockbiter has a 40% chance to increase the damage of your next Storm Strike by 100%. And this obviously synergizes really well with your... What's it called? I don't know. Whatever it's called, your Stormbringer passive. If we can get a proc, that'd be great. We're just gonna Rockbiter till we, till we get a Landslide proc. This might take a while. Pretty much, if you get a Landslide proc, and this was present in a battleground yesterday that I did. Uh, I got a Stormbringer proc, which is the reset of your Storm Strike, and I got a Landslide proc. Uh, I, I used Nature's Earthen Spike on someone, which pretty much buffs your damage. And I hit him for 50,000, which is pretty crazy, especially for a melee. So we'll just see here what we hit for. 25,000 non-crit. I hit a crit yesterday, so that kind of explains it. But this can buff your Storm Strike damage a decent amount, and it's, it's fairly good. Um, Totem Mastery, I wouldn't take it. If you really want to, then go for it. For the 45 row, I take Spirit Wolf a lot because it increases your move speed, reduces the damage you take, stacks up to 4 times. So ideally, if you're in this, and you're, if you're in it a decent amount of time, you'll take 20% reduced damage and gain 20% increased move speed. Other than this just making you incredibly mobile, it can make you decently durable in Ghost Wolf form, along with Spectral Recovery, which is an honor talent which heals you every two seconds while you're in Ghost Wolf form, and also increases the move speed, so those two synergize pretty well. Um, for the 40, again, Earth Shield, I took this last patch. It did get its healing reduced a little bit. Haven't used it since Spirit Wolf just was introduced, uh, because I just think Spirit Wolf is really good. The only downside of Spirit Wolf is that it does take a little bit of time, four seconds, to get up 20% damage reduction. And if you leave, that damage reduction is gone. Static Charge, never taken it. It's good for Mythics, but that's like the only instance I'd say. And here's the, the shit show row. This is my least favorite row. I think <laughs> definitely my least favorite row. Out of a lot of specs as well. Not just Shaman, but like out of all the specs in the 60 row. This is probably one of my least favorite. Just because all these are really fucking boring. They don't really do anything. Searing Assault pretty much causes your Flame Tongue to apply a burn effect on someone. There it is. Does 2,000 damage every 2 seconds, which isn't that bad of a DPS increase. And it is just built into your core rotation, so that's the main reason I take this talent. And that's the main reason I would suggest this talent. Hailstorm is decent. I've used it in the past. I haven't used it recently. But it pretty much does the same thing as Flame Tongue does, where it causes your melee weapons to deal damage, and it also slows the target any time you hit them. So if you find that you're struggling to stick onto a target, then I would suggest taking this. It'll probably have decent slash competitive DPS with Searing Assault, but I think the downfall of it is having to apply Frostbrand, which does cause Maelstrom, and then having to stick on that target. And Keeping track of another buff is way more troublesome than you'd think it is. So that's the main reason I stick with Searing Assault, but if you need the slow slash damage from Hailstorm, then go ahead and take it. If you're going against a melee or a caster that you just think you'll never be able to hit, Overcharge would not be a bad choice. I've taken it in the past, however, it's pretty disappointing these days because it doesn't hit nearly as hard as it should. 
you'll see here, uh, 40 Maelstrom, it buffs the damage by 12,000. Hits for 11,000, which is pretty weak. I mean, it's not bad, but you know, Storm Strike hits for 11,000. Just non-buffed, 8,000, sorry. And then buffed, it hits for 21,000. And then, I don't know. It's not bad if you're going against a caster that you think you just can't hit. Any other situation, I really wouldn't take this though, and I'd just stick with Searing Assault. With a 75 row, most of the time I run Nature's Guardian, just because it heals you. There's really no other explanation behind that. The other choice here is Feral Lunge, which, again, pretty good for casters. If you think you can't hit them, lunge at your enemy as a Ghost Wolf, Spooky Wolf, biting them and deal pretty much... The tooltip's useless. It's a gap closer. It's like a harpoon or a shadow step or anything like that. It's just a gap closer. The other choice here is Windrush. Never used it. Could be good. Two minute cooldown though. Maybe if it had a one minute cooldown, I'd take... Consider taking it, but until that happens, I'm never taking that talent. For the 90 row, Sundering, you, you really don't take any other choice here. Crashing Storm, shit, Fury of Air. I've taken it in the past. It does uh, it does drain your Maelstrom consistently. One Maelstrom, three Maelstrom, sorry, plus three per second. So does just drain your Maelstrom constantly. So if you're having Maelstrom generation problems, I just really wouldn't take that, and I'd stick with Sundering. And of course, Sundering interrupts people, does tons of damage. That's all I need to say. Uh, for the 100 row, and this is the most versatile row, I'd say, or the row that you're going to be switching around the most. I use Earthen Spike all the time just because I really like it. Increases physical damage, increases nature damage, and does decent damage in itself. Ascendance pretty much makes it so your Storm Strike has a reduced cooldown. You bypass armor, so this will be really good against anyone with high armor. And it also gives it a 30-yard range, so it's decent against uh, casters as well. 3-minute cooldown is the downfall of this, though. Uh, I've seen a lot of people take this for Arena just because it obviously buffs your Storm Strike a decent amount, causes it to bypass all armor, gives you a 30 yard range, and gives your auto attacks a 30 yard range as well. However, if someone just line of sights you, your cooldowns are gone, and you know that the huge utility or usage you get out of your 100 rows is just completely gone, and enhancements are, I'd say, easily kiteable if they don't know what they're doing. The other choice here, and this is the most fun, in my opinion, uh, for the 100 row, but it's not the most viable. Elemental Spirits. Reduces the cooldown of your Feral Spirits by 30 seconds, which is your Ghost Wolves. Cause your Feral Spirits to be imbued with Fire, Frost, or Lightning damage, enhancing your abilities. So how this works is if you use your Ghost Wolves with this, I'll just show you guys here. If you use your Ghost Wolves, you'll see I got two electric ones. These things, the damage of your Storm Strike and Wind Fury is buffed by 70% since they're both Lightning. Each one giving me an individual 35%. Uh, the other choices here are Frost Wolf, which just gives you a flat damage increase while you have the mounts on your abilities, and then you have the Fire Wolf, which is the shittiest, which pretty much makes your Lava Lash, which is your least used Maelstrom spending ability, apply a damage over time effect that is fairly weak to the target. The reason I say this is the most fun is because you just get different colored wolves. It, I don't want to say flexes your playstyle, but it changes it around depending on the elementals not elemental, depending on the, uh, I guess, color of your wolf, I guess, for lack of a better word. Depending on the color of your wolves, you'll be doing different abilities, and that's why I think this talent's the most fun. But the most viable one's definitely Earthen Spike. So going into Honor Talents, finally. Honor Talents are interesting. I think there's a lot of viable ones, and there's the, there's, uh, there's a few non-viable ones, but pretty much all of these are pretty decent. Personally, this is like this is my go-to every time. Spectral Recovery, Ride the Lightning, and Shamanism. Instead of Ride the Lightning and uh, Arena, I'll either run Sky Fury, Grounding, or Ethereal if it's melee, and uh, or Counter Strike. Most people know to kill Counter Strike, but most of the times, if you're trying not to break your other, if you're trying to not break your other Arena partner's CC, because I'll try to get into this. Ride the Lightning pretty much causes your Storm Strike. If there's no Enemies around the enemy that you Storm Strike, it'll send lightning bolts to the two furthest enemies within 40 yards. This can break healer CC all the time, and it does, so I wouldn't suggest taking this in Arena, but it is really good for Battlegrounds just because it pads the meters, does extra damage, and uh, can do decent damage into your Storm Strike. And it pretty much makes your Storm Strike hit for 20,000 all the time. You'll see there. Oh wait, I'm not taking... <laughs> I was like, why didn't it hit for the, the extra 10,000 damage? And I realized because I wasn't taking the talent. There we go. Storm Strike again. You'll see that little lightning thing above that is the uh, Ride the Lightning damage. And it's pretty decent. 6,000, 7,000. Decent damage. So that's why I take that. But of course it's going to break crowd control in Arena, so you're going to be taking grounding most times. 
Going into Spectral Recovery, I've talked about this. Pretty much increases your move speed while on Ghost Wolf and it causes you to heal by 3% of your max health every 2 seconds. This can be increased a little bit more with certain Ghost Wolf traits in the as a right thing, but... Yeah, I don't have it, so it's not, not there. And Shamanism. Your Bloodlust spell now is a 60 second cooldown. Increases haste by 20%, only affects you and your friendly target when cast for 10 seconds. In addition, Bloodlust is no longer affected by Sated. So pretty much if you use this... In a PvP situation, you're going to gain a 10 second, 20% haste increase. If you don't have a specific macro or a specific target that you want to give your bloodlust to, it'll only apply the bloodlust to you. And this is something that I think is very noteworthy. And I think is something that Blizzard should fix. I don't think you should have to have someone specifically focused in a bloodlust macro to actually give them bloodlust. I think it should just give you bloodlust and then whatever allies near you, it should give them bloodlust as well. Uh, but if, of course, if you're in a group and you just use... The normal bloodlust ability it'll only give it to you it won't give it to another target something worth considering blizzard let's go into other honor talents that i don't necessarily take but i do think are noteworthy um what all right oh, all righty uh ethereal form you turn ethereal replaces your 40 percent damage reduction so this is something to take into consideration when you are taking this honor talent making you immune to all physical damage the key here is physical damage you're not going to be immune to spellcaster damage. So if you take this into a double fire mage, double destro team, you're pretty much asking for yourself to get fucked. Uh, Sky Fury Totem is the other kind of noteworthy choice here. Pretty much increases your critical strike damage by 20%. So whenever you crit, you're going to be hitting for 20% increased damage on that crit. Uh, it's really good for elemental specifically, but I've taken it on enhancement a few times in it. I mean, it works. Uh, it's worth taking if you, you know, play with like a destro lock. This will buff their chaos bolt damage by 20%. So that's something to think about. Counter Strike Totem is the other choice here. I think this is one of my favorite Battleground Honor Talents as well, just because people in Battlegrounds tend to not really kill Counter Strike Totems, and it can reflect so much damage. If you use Counter Strike Totem in good situations where you think the totem is not going to be attacked, and everyone's just attacking everyone around you, this has a 20 yard range. So any enemy within 20 yard range of this totem, it'll reflect all the damage back onto the person. So. Something to consider if you're doing Battlegrounds. I've taken it a few times, and if you do try to maximize your Counter-Strike Totem, it will be your top damage. Unless it's killed, then it won't be your top damage. And that's all the, I'd say, noteworthy honor talents there. Now we can finally get into the rotation. So the rotation for enhancements, I'd say, fairly simple. But that's also because I've been playing enhancement a decent amount. You pretty much use Stormstrike on cooldown. Use Rockbiter. Whenever you don't have anything else to press, or you use Rockbiter just as a button to generate Maelstrom, I'd say. It's not the button you press when you have nothing else to press. You pretty much press it whenever it's up, unless you're Maelstrom capped. If you're Maelstrom capped, you do not want to press it because then you're wasting the resource generation from your Rockbiter. You'll see here I'm pressing Lava Lash when I have nothing else to do. Lava Lash is that button that you press when you just have nothing else to do. Of course, you do want to manage your uh, Maelstrom somewhat responsibly. Then you don't want to completely maelstrom starve yourself, which can happen, especially in burst. But yeah, um, going into the, I guess the burst rotation. This is the normal non-burst rotation, just you know, constantly using storm strike and lava lash, applying flame tongue, and trying to keep that up, and then just using rock biter. Of course, if it was an AOE situation, it would look more something like this. I'll go over to this kind of AOE group. You're going to be using crash lightning as that kind of filler ability over lava lash. And you will be generating a lot of Maelstrom if you do get those Wind Fury procs on this. And another th noteworthy thing is that your Crash Lightning has a chance to proc your Stormbringer, which is your reset on Stormstrike. It also buffs it. I already mentioned this. And, uh, yeah. If you're in a 2 plus group, start weaving Crash Lightning into your rotation, because it will buff your damage. Um, okay, let's go into Burst now. And the Burst is like. I don't want to say it's simple, but it's a lot of buttons you press just to buff your normal rotation, pretty much. So the burst, ideally, is Spirit Wolves, Earthen Spike, Bloodlust, cooldowns, and then you use Sundering. I use Sundering just to, like, wha-bam, I'm hitting you for 25,000, and I want to get it in the Earthen Spike. But you, you most of the time want to save Sundering for when the enemy's actually trying to cast an ability. Uh, if you really don't think anyone's casting ability, you can use Sundering just for the damage, which admittedly I do a little bit too much. But, 
In the burst, you want to time or try to get all of your damage into your Earthen Spike window, which pretty much gives you a flat 20% damage increase. You have very few abilities that don't do physical or nature damage. Uh, off the top of my head, the only ability that doesn't do uh, physical or nature damage is your uh, Flame Tongue and Frostbrand if you take it, but no one really takes that. So, your burst is literally just trying to use your normal abilities in an Earthen Spike with the Bloodlust proc and with your Spirit Wolves. So, uh, that's the rotation. 13k DPS, which is pretty bad, I think. I don't know. Whatever is good DPS these days, but... Going into traits. This is something that, in PvP, I especially don't emphasize on, because all traits are halved in PvP to hopefully reduce their effectiveness. Um, I don't know which traits are good. I can... I'll just fucking look it up. So, it looks like the traits you want... Are, I have one of them too, it's this one, Primal Primer. Melee attacks with Flame Tongue and Active increase the damage of your next Lava Lash by 122, stacking up to 10 times. So if you hit a target 10 times with Flame Tongue, you're going to be doing a thousand extra damage on them. You saw this debuff on the Raid Boss, not Raid Boss, but this guy while I was hitting him. It's this thing right here. If you have three of these traits, it will buff the damage a decent amount, and it does just stack up. So if you have three of these traits, it'll be... what? Let's see, what's it at at 10 with just one trait? Come on. I don't want a flame. Nine. One more. There we go. Okay, so with three of these traits, I'd be hitting for about 3,000 extra damage. Halved in PvP, that's about 1,500 extra damage. Which is why I don't really like emphasizing traits, because if you really think about it, any trait that's really halved is going to lose a lot of its effectiveness. Ideally, there's really not a whole lot of difference in traits. It's something you'd probably have to research on your own, depending on the Azerite armor that you do get. Uh, personally, I just don't give a shit about traits. I just take whichever one looks the best. Thunderhand's Fury isn't bad. I heard it got nerfed a little bit though, so that's the reason I'm not taking it. I really like this trait. I don't know why, I've just been using it on all my tunes, and I just like the fact that it heals and does damage with an execute effect on both the healing and the uh, damage part of it. But, that is Enhancement Shaman. I don't think there's really anything else to cover with this guy. Um, general playstyle tips, you're really squishy, you don't have a lot of defensives, and your self heals are shit. So if you see your health going away, uh, just run away in Ghost Wolf and try to heal yourself, because if you, I'd say if you get past one-fourth, if you get below one-fourth of your health, you're probably gonna die. So, definitely keep track of your health. Pro tip for any class, definitely keep track of your health. And, uh, play defensive. I don't, I don't want to say play defensive, because Enhancement Shaman literally just runs at someone and presses Storm Strike and their health will just go away. But if you're getting focused, you really need to watch your health, because Enhancement Shamans can get melted. Very, very fast. I'd say equivalent of, like, Quathies or Rogues. So, something to keep in mind. And that's it. That's the basic, in quotation mark, guides of Enhancement Shaman. If you guys liked it, thumbs up, subscribe, description, bell thing. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.